Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plaster with another tip of the day. This is really important guys. Notice, okay right now we got lawn people here, they're using their dust machines and they're blowing and making a lot of noise. For us, come on by my friend, no worries. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, I'm talking with the lawn guys. All right, for us, I'm going to show you one of the most important things guys and that is what I'm doing right now. I'm hosing everything down. I'm hosing the walls. I'm hosing the ground. I'm hosing our work. I'm hosing the trees. Why am I doing all this hosing? Because we, what we're going to do is we're going to break, we're going to correct this right here. And what this is, it's uh, the chimney is separate. It's settling at a different rate as the house. Big deal. But at the same time, it's a 70, 80 year old house. We got a crack here, a massive crack. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna break that out. Why am I wetting everything? And what's the breaking out got to do with wetting everything? I'm gonna go back in time and know this isn't a short, and it takes too long to explain something to do a short. A lot of people say, hey, your video's too long. It is what it is, guys. But anyway, growing up, I grew up uh, nasty neighborhood commercial. But I remember and I recall there was uh, Transmission shop next to my house. There was a plating place where we had 40 vats of acid that we smelled all day long. But they also had a paint shop. And in that paint shop, there was a guy who I knew worked there. And every time I'd go in there, <laughs> they'd be wetting the floors. And I'd say, what's that about? And they'd say, we're going to paint cars. And I thought, okay. So they would paint the cars. they wet the ground. They had all these sheets hung up. And that paint was so that the dust, when they sprayed to uh, paint the car would adhere to the ground, it would adhere to the sheets. I'd never understood that, but I thought, okay. Today with modern equipment, they have infil filtration systems that get rid of the dust. And that, that was a garage shop. But for us, I'm wetting all this down because I'm gonna break this out. And for years now, I hate wearing a mask. Yeah, I wore it during COVID, but I don't like wearing a mask. And even when I was hard carrying, mixing, I'd set up and the people would say, hurry up, Kirk. And I said, I got to adjust the mixer for when I throw the cement, it doesn't go in my face. So if the wind is blowing this way, I'd set up. So I'm mixing this way. The wind blows opposite of, so I don't have to inhale it. Yeah, I hard carry for a lot of years, never wore a mask. Anyway, that's about the most important tip I can tell you guys. Now, Jay and I are going to break this out. We're going to break this out. And because I wet everything, we're not going to inhale too much dust. We might inhale a little bit and I might put a mask on, but I doubt it. Now, what, what caused this? Water going inside the stucco, that wood expanded. This wood went, when, wet some wood, guys. You wet wood, like say this right here. And what happens? The wood expands. So as it expands and the chimney drops, this, this happens. Have I seen worse? Absolutely. Have I seen better? Sure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this out. Then we're gonna look at it. And one of the fixes are I can put caulking in there once I see what it is, or I can put expanding foam because if it's so hollow, I need the foam to waterproof it. Do they make waterproof cement? Sure they do. Rapid Set makes a waterproof cement. Um, anyway, once we've addressed this and got rid of everything, and we are doing two sides, we're not going to bore you with the other side. Long enough detail on this one. We're going to break this out. We're going to see what we have improvise, caulk it, or seal it somehow. Then we're going to come with a cementitious material and fix that. We're going to apply a bonding agent to this. And the cement I prefer to use has um, got lime in it, so it flexes. It moves when the chimney moves and all that. So I figured 15 years before this even hairlines like this again. This is brick. How do you know it's brick? Listen, solid, wood, hollow, solid so I could just look at it and I know it's brick anyhow when we get to the next stage we'll show you that all right guys we'll show you step two because we can a lot of people think we are teachers we're not teachers we're applicators and right here this is uh this is a lime stucco why am I using a lime stucco because I want it to be able to flex can I use a waterproof stucco sure it doesn't flex though um Anyway, what, what I'm doing here is I'm filling this crack now. And this is, uh, again, it's a lime stucco. Gee whiz, what the heck is a lime stucco? 
Well, that'll be in the description. Some things take forever to explain. I'm just getting this bottom here. And the idea, guys, is you want to waterproof it. Uh, however you do, that's your choice. I'll tell you when I get up top here what we've done and this and why. There's uh, a lot to it, guys. We make it seem easy because we're material experts. We do this stuff for a living, guys. That means we're pretty good at it. And when you have to go back over your work for whatever reason, then that's the beginning of wisdom because <laughs> nobody wants to go back and redo something. That's how you really learn how to do it right. And I've been doing this uh, for a whole lot of years. Anyway, I'm going to get a, a scoop of mud here. And then I'm going to uh, repair that area. And while I'm up there, I want to show you guys something that's kind of important. Uh, well, actually, pretty important. If you guys are going to do stuff like this. All right, so now we broke out the brick chimney, wood wall. Now I'm using this stucco here. That's a lime stucco. Now all I'm doing is filling this up, guys. How thick can I go with this? I go two inches. Can I go an eighth of an inch? Yes. Can I go one inch? Yes. Uh, there's this particular stucco. It'll be in the description. Um, you can go as, as thick as you want pretty much and, or as thin as you want. Now, here's the important part. I mentioned earlier when I first started doing this video about all dust and I say, hey, instead of uh, wearing dust masks all the time, which I got one in my pocket, I'm uh, explaining that wet everything. Now, this is off topic guys but see these masks here now we ordered this and it says it won't steam up you can put it on it has a filter here you put it on it'll guard your eyeballs and it won't steam up yeah if you're an office worker if you're a real worker in reality that's what that's worth garbage it's a big i'm sure when i was in high school I used to hang out with this dude called ken yamawaki he was a gymnast he could do the iron cross like this. I mean, you, you hold yourself on the rings. And the guy, Jesse Brewer, he was a runner. And they went to play Bruce Lee. They went to New or L.A. to play the part of Bruce Lee. And Kent, if you're watching this, that was 30 years ago since I met Kent. He used to say, I'm sure we go to a movie where they're doing karate and these guys are jumping over buildings. And he'd say, I'm sure. And so I was thinking, Kent, you're embarrassing me, man. But that little mask, it's the big I'm sure. Anyway, to finish that story, since I started it, Jesse and Kent went to audition for Bruce Lee. And Kent just didn't work it. But uh, my buddy Jesse, he was a handsome Filipino dude. And they got back and I said, well, you guys uh, get the job. And he says, no, they, they didn't want Kent. And I said, what about you? He says, no. They said I was too good looking. And I thought for a minute, I thought, and I hear them both laughing. I thought, man, you got me right there. Anyway, back to this and that I'm sure mask that some of you guys might spend your money on. Don't waste your time. Do the, do the water or you could waste your time with that. Or my handy dandy little cough mask. Anyhow, I'm gonna show you one more thing guys because this is kind of important with why this happened. This is a diverter right here. Now this diverter was installed about two weeks ago, but it wasn't fused in. It was just hanging, dangling there. So this particular caulking here, this is Sikaflex 1A. What's that mean? It's a polyurethane caulking. It means if you use it for a crack, it's a drag to get. You can't make it match the stucco because it drags. <laughs> but it's the strongest caulking in the country. Uh, because it's a polyurethane. You can put bricks together with them and they'll last forever. Anyway, what I did was I sealed this uh, gutter right here and then I sealed this area so this diverter actually works now. And they'll never have to worry about using some lag bolts to uh, lag it into this uh, brick chimney. So that's done, that's fixed. All the rainwater will go here. It will never go behind this again. That could have been what started it, I don't know. 
but that second flex, more flex for caulking cracks. Anyhow, now next what I'm gonna do is uh, take a minute, I got a lot of cement here, so I've gotta use it up. We're on a, we're using hot mud. What's hot mud mean? It means uh, use it or lose it. So I gotta put this mud on this other side, then we'll come back to finishing this. Last phase. Now, in the, in the description again, I'll put what cement we're using, guys, in case you're interested. Now I take a wet sponge float. Yeah, water. Voila. Tap it out. Turn it. Tap it out. Now, what I'm doing is I'm bringing out the aggregate, the sand, this stuff here. This is fine. It's been painted 30 times, so it's it's taking away some of the heavy stuff like this. That's another video guide. Everybody says, "Cut your videos too long," so we're doing separate things. Anyway. Right here, this this cement is already hardening because we got accelerators in it. We are the kings of accelerators, so we don't mess around. You got to know your materials, guys. Okay, now that this is set up, been on about 10 minutes. I'm gonna take a wet sponge float, and guys, it doesn't matter. A lot of people keep saying, "What's the difference between red and, or green and yellow?" Is that you? That's a good question. One's green, one's yellow. They make all colors. Okay, you take the a moist sponge float. And you're going to start here. You're just going to take it up. You don't have to look, guys. Take it up. Spin it around. Take the clean side. Right here. Take it all the way up, guys. And do the same thing with the other side. Here. Take it all the way up, guys. All right. Now, that's going to bring out the aggregate. Now, what we try to do is match the aggregate that's exposed with, with all the paint. Because if I say, well, she whiz. <laughs> Paint will fix this right here. We didn't do it, guys. So if I say paint's gonna fix that, you can see right there, that would make me a liar. Paint will not fix a wrong finish. Uh, anyway, so now we do this. And what I could do is give this about 15 minutes. And then with a dry, a drier float, this will knock the sand even down further. It'll, it'll make it smooth. So for example, I took this float out just to prove a point, not to explain the difference in color. But I, this is dry. Now say right here, it's a little heavy. Let it dry. Then you take a sponge float, and it helps that it's about 100 degrees. Love it. Take the sponge float. And now just go around it again. And each time you go around it, it softens it a little bit. So we want to soften it so that I don't have to say, well, you know, paint it a few hundred times. It'll match. We want it to be as close to on the money as possible. And have I matched every finish I've ever done on the money? No, no one can do that, that's impossible. But we do the best we can with what we have to work with, guys. Anyway, so again, I'm taking this dry float and I'm softening it just a little bit more. And if you say, gee, I softened it and softened it and couldn't get it, take a handy dandy trowel. Let's go over it a little bit. Now, now you don't have to soften it. Now you can just push it in. Now that matches this finish. You see that, guys? A lot of ways to do this that we know them all. Some of you may say, and I had somebody say this once, say, you know, Kirk, you got a thousand videos, you did one twice. I may have done one twice, but it takes a lot of time to recognize. So the more you watch them, the better you can understand how we do this, guys. We're just showing you how we do it. We're craftsmen, we are stucco contractors in the Description is our email address. You can send us pictures and we'll uh, bid it online. Anyway, guys, my name is Kirk Jason's on the camera. Also a licensed stucco guy. Call him or me. We'll be happy to come out and uh, bid it, no matter what stage you're at. Anyway, lost my train of thought. My name is Kirk Jason's on the camera. We thank you guys for watching. And as usual, we'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, we want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the videos that we put out, please like and subscribe so that we can keep making these videos for everybody. And as always, from the, from the entire, entire Giordano family, family, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.